Mm-hmm. They do such a good job with this coffee. Such a good job. You taste the coffee? Hold on. You be putting coffee in yours? Yeah, I put coffee in my cup. What do you put in your cup? <laughs> Three. What is huh? What the hell is huh? Welcome to Olympic High Lights with me, Snoop D O Double G, the king of the West Coast. Yeah, your mother's favorite. Big dang little hole strangler, all of the above, and then so. I'm and I'm and I'm Kevin. I'm just Kevin. I didn't know that we were gonna do this, so I'm not prepared Same, to give a runoff. You do I'll, your I, thing. No, do next you? time I'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, match your energy. Go ahead. I don't have anything today except Kevin. But guess what? What? Guess what we're going to do? We're going to have a great time today. We're going to have a lot of fun. Here's why. Because we're breaking down our favorite highlights of the 2020 Tokyo Games. And I don't care how much fun we plan on having, it will never be more fun than Australian swim coach Dean Boxell. When I tell you this man gave the most energetic celebration of all time. Uh, look, look at his celebration after Ariane Titmus won. Look at him. Go. Look. Yes. Yeah, baby. She Come had a on. special win Woo! over Timmy Ledecky. Look at him. Get away. Get out of here. Back up. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Nah, he was pumped up. Did you see him hump the plexiglass? I seen him get his freak on. Huh, gave, gave it three oh, humps. Freaky gave it three humps and a blast yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a great way to kick off our new segment, Spotlighting Athletes That Win Gold. This is Tokyo Bling. Bling, bling. U.S. swimmer Chase Kalish earned his first Olympic gold medal in the 400-meter individual medley to go along with his silver from the 2016 Games in Rio. Hit it. Man, he's smoking Pull. the competition. Look how far Pull. he up. He's so Finish. far ahead, they only worried about who in second place. One, two for the U.S. So big. Hey, Kev, when you were swimming in high school, was you ever in an event like that? Yeah, you know, that's called the 400-meter uh, IM. I what does IM short, stand for? Well, short for individual medley. As swimmers talk, you probably wouldn't know I about wouldn't it. I wouldn't know nothing about it. Well, that was actually my prom. My prom was a 100-meter individual medley. And, uh, okay, boy, let me you excited something. as a motherfucker but about it, too. I was just... something to watch. That's right. You got <laughs> oh. any footage of this shit? Yeah, well, you're not going to get it. Not, y'all, no, no. I'd love to see you in some Speedos yeah. swimming up and down the, uh, the meat getting yeah. yours on. True story about me and Speedos, because I swam, you know, for a swim team, we were all comfortable. With the speedo situation, it's just right. what you wore. It's 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 swim trunks, That's right? What we do. So uh, high school trip, I remember we all <laughs> we all had like a little pool party, and uh, I came out in speedos, and it did not go the way that I thought it would, boy. They, <laughs> they thought I had panties on out there. They said, "What you, what you doing, Kev? What you mean what I'm doing? What, I, I, oh, you I, hadn't reached your prime yeah, yet? Yeah, no, no, no. I definitely it was cold that morning too. Shout Young Vienna sausage in the house. <laughs> <laughs> one of those days, man. It'd be like, hey, Kev, one thing about back in the days, they stay back in the day. That's it. That's it. A U.S. fencer, Lee Kiefer, snatched her first gold medal when she upset the defending champ from the Rio Olympics and the current number one ranked foil fencer in the world. Ooh. Look at this. Watch this. Watch. Light him up. Ah! Ah! So it don't hurt when you get stuck? No, they got on protection within the gear, you know, but it's, it's all about execution. Man, I'm a fan of lighting up. That's what I am a fan of. In a massive upset, the Tunisian swimmer Ahmed Hafnawi <laughs> won the 400 meter men's freestyle after being the last swimmer to qualify for the final. Well, Snoop, I gotta sound it out. I don't wanna mess their names up, so I take my time. I wanna make sure that I enunciate Hafnawi. Yes, Ahmed, first of all, here's a little fact the man is 18 years old, and, and it's the first gold ever for the Tunisian in the 400 meter freestyle. I repeat, the first gold ever. Look at this. Mm. Get in there, half now. He in lane eight. In lane eight, that's strong. Mm. Look at him. He's so hyped up. He look like he finna jump in the water. Hey. Go and take a swim, homie. That celebration tells you that that's an unexpected win, cause he don't plan to act a fool like that. No. 
No, look at look at this one. By the way, a lane eight upset is strong. Once that again, is? Swimmer, talk, swimmer talk. Lane four and five are the favorites. So if you come in on the outside lane and you pull in a W, you're 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 not even expected to be in the So race. you got further distance from being on the outside. Well, lane one, lane eight, lane seven, lane two, it's like, nah, I mean they're here, but we're not really watching them. Lane three, four, five, six, it's supposed to go down to that. That's a major, major win. Shouts out to you, Amid. Big upset. Congrats to you. And shout out to another great celebration dance. Yeah, man. And finally, Anastasia Zalotich became the first U.S. woman to win a gold medal in Taekwondo. And we got highlights of her doing what she does. Let's take a look at it. Now. We are under 10 seconds, and I am, I am losing it slowly and surely because in two seconds, we have the first woman gold medal in Olympic history. Anastasia Zelotic did the thing. Why is he separating it like that? This is the, the, the first Hege ever the time the, the women will win a who was Go, that? I mean, brother, put your sentence together, man. What is that? Goodness gracious. Sesame Street? That's a big deal for the U.S. Ultimately, a big deal for Anastasia. Congratulations, man. Putting our country on the map in Taekwondo. Huge, 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 huge. I love it. Man, she was kicking ass. Uh, I'm going to show Mr. Take a deep breath in between each word he says how it should have been done. Roll a clip again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take that. Uh-huh. You off balance. Here comes another one. Pat, pat. Back up. Back up, because the gold is mine. Back. Get your ass back. That's it. It's over. For the first time ever, a woman from the USA has won the gold in Taekwondo. Right? Boom, boom, boom on your bitch ass. That's exactly how it's done. Look at her trying to come over now and get a head Congrats, shake. Get your bitch ass. Head gear all here. twisted up. Go fix your head gear, because my boot been upside it. Okay, that is it. <laughs> That's how you call it. And that is also the end of our segment, Tokyo Bling. Bling, 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 bling. Unfortunately, the U.S. didn't win a gold in street skateboarding, but we didn't go home empty-handed. Jagger Eaton, well, he actually won the bronze in a truly American way on the tank top while listening to rap music, probably lyrics that he couldn't repeat. And he had a cell phone in his pocket, Snoop. Mm. What other sports can you do with a cell phone on you, hmm? This is a hell of a sport. Ooh. I'm sure he's listening to some real hip-hop right now. Wow. Yeah. A little funny anecdote about this man. He's named Jagger because his parents went to see the Rolling Stones on their first date. Snoop, question for you. Would you name your kids after where you were when you and your wife went on your first date? Only if I went to a Rick James concert. Okay. Then right. I could name my son Rick James, bitch. That's pretty damn impressive right there. Uh, <laughs> Rick James, bitch, is his kid's name. <laughs> I got to give a shout out to Nigel, though, who I had a chance to talk to, man. And uh, he really educated me on the world of street skateboarding. Unfortunately, he didn't take home a gold this year. I'm still a fan. Still rooting for you, champ. The Olympics are in full swing, and it's hard to keep up with all the lingo and so many sporting events. That's why you need our Olympic cheat sheet, all right? That Olympic cheat sheet will keep you on the streets of knowledge. So, let's get into it. The origins of judo are in Japan. So it's fitting that Japan favored to keep home the gold. And in judo, well, your entire goal is to knock your opponent on their back and finish with an arm bar. But I'm sure you guys already knew that. You had to know that. You know what you know, and you don't know what you don't know. Oh, you don't know. Yeah, you don't. You don't know. I see what you did there. Yeah, you don't. Well, everybody, everybody should know that. Okay. Listen, we just witnessed history in judo after Abe siblings of Japan won gold in their respective judo events. Here are some more things that you can say while watching judo. These are important things for you to know while watching the sport. The first thing is. Oh, that Ashawaza is some of the best I've ever seen. That Ashawaza is some of the best I've ever seen. That's right. Snoop, can you do me a favor? Tell the people what that actually means. Well, what it means is your foot sweep was smooth in a mug. That's right. Foot sweep. It's all about the foot sweep. Okay, if you don't know that and during judo, you shouldn't be in judo. Okay, an Ashawaza is the most important thing to know. Hey, you better back up for Ashawaza your ass. Nah. That's a uh, slang for foot sweep, right, Snoop? Room sweep. On a street, you know, that's probably one of the, actually the most active and efficient methods in street fighting. I got a homie named Half. That's his favorite move, cuz I always start off like this, and his first move was popping, and when he gets you up, pop, 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 pop. Oh, he go foot sweep, then hands. Cold with it, yes, sir. He, he go, he go, I'm gonna get you down low. I need them legs. Ha ha, then I'm coming with two Yeah, because normally if you get foot sweep, you're probably gonna fall back because you ain't waiting on it. And it's like the head blow you take, bop, 
And then, you know what I'm saying, you finish him on off. You know what I'm talking about? It's with funny you say two. that, man. You know, that for me, as a smaller guy, my move was always to use an Ashawaza. Right? Mm. And that's before I even was educated right. on judo. I just came in. Ashawaza first. Now, when you give me a little inklet, well, guess what? We the same size. Ooh, now, like now, 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 yeah. now, I'm about, to, I'm about to lay into your yeah. ass, right? Ashawaza. <laughs> that's when I come in <laughs> with the Ashawaza. Uh, here's another one, Snoop. This match is about to be a hickey wacky. This match is going to be a hickey wacky. You know what that means, Snoop? After all the work, the match ended in a tie which is crazy. Mm. Seems to me if this sport was called, like, judo, you ended with a penalty kick, right? So you suggesting that at the end of it, if it ends in a hickey-wacky, they both got to stand there and take a penalty kick from each other. And whoever's penalty kick landed the hardest, then that's the win. Yeah, kickoff, you open your chest up like this and let cuz kick you square in your motherfucking chest with Ooh. the bottom of his heels. Ooh. And if you stand there, you move on. If but, not, get out. What kick, though? Are you talking about that that door that door opener? Not the one, like, from forward chest. What kick you talking about? Game of death, Bruce Lee, when he walked up the stairs and Kareem hit his ass with this motherfucker what, oh, right that there. Oh, that right there. You're not going to make it out of that. Motherfucking ass with that one right Somebody there. Somebody hit you with the foot to the, to the, to the breathing, this, this little space here, you're not making it out. <laughs> That's that right there. That's, that's, that, that's what come with that. When a motherfucker heal up like that. Snoop, you ever kick anybody like that? You're motherfucking right. Ooh. By the way, I would love to hear from the man that has lived to talk about taking Snoop Dogg's boot to the chest. I would love <laughs> to hear from this guy. Uh, if we could get a special call in from the man that is, has. <laughs> that motherfucker man... don't speak right. <laughs> I talk like this. Yeah, he was. That motherfucker kicked me in the chest. That motherfucker caught me slipping. That motherfucker kicked me in the chest. That motherfucker caught me. That nigga caught me slipping. and kicked me in the motherfucker. <laughs> well, no match should ever end in a hickey-wacky. Ties are stupid, especially in judo. But if, in fact, it does, you know now what it is. It's a hickey-wacky. Let's move on to some fencing references. Now, the U.S., well, they've already won a gold in foil, but we still got a lot more events coming up. Now, if you want to cheer on the fencers, here are some things that you can say. Pay attention. First thing is, Alez. Alez, Alez. That's right. Snoop, please tell the people what Alez means. This means let's start the match. Pretty simple. Pretty damn simple. I don't have time to wait all day. If I'm out here and I'm in this hot ass costume, Alez, Alez, me, come on, man, stop dragging ass around here, Alez, 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 Alez. Give me one more, Kev. This is fun. William Shayner. Well, he just won gold in the men's 10 meter air rifle event. Now, as an American, it's very rare that you can cheer on the shooter, but in this case, it's actually allowed. Here are some things that you can say while watching. Pay attention, people. He just double tapped that double trap. He just double tapped that double trap. That's exactly what it did. Snoop, tell the people what that is, please. That means he shot both the clay pigeons super fast. That's exactly what it means. Now, understand, you can't double tap a double trap unless you got good eye finger dexterity, OK? You need good finger dexterity to double tap a double trap. Pat, 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 pat. You know, Snoop, when I was uh, first doing action movies, I was very guilty of doing sound effects while uh, shooting real? the gun. Yeah, no, they you said, didn't. They said that, uh, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, you got to stop going <laughs> pew, pew, when you do the scenes. They said they caught me a couple times holding the gun. And when That's they were when go, you know you just too excited <laughs> to be on a movie. You I, did your own sound effects, I did, the own, I did my own paps. <laughs> Pat, Pat. And they was like, Kevin, you, you got to stop making the sound because we can hear it. I was like, I ain't making no sound. They showed me the playback in slow motion. I was like, Pat, Pat. I'm like, I got to fix that. You got it right now, <laughs> Here's another one, okay? Pay attention. She has to get this string in a tin ring or she's toast. She has to get this string in a tin ring or she's toast. Hey, Snoop, explain that to people, please. She got to get a series of five to ten shots in the bullseye. That's exactly what it means. If you don't execute and getting five to ten shots in that bullseye, well, then you're done. That means you got to get the string in a tin ring. It's really, really simple, people. All you got to do is pay attention. And as you can see, I've been paying attention. So if you're watching, Tell somebody, get the string in the tin ring and get your ass up out of here. Because you ain't going to get the gold without the string in the tin ring. Right? Bullseye. Snoop, that is it for today's Olympic cheat sheet, guys. What a segment, Snoop. Alas. 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 Welcome back to Olympic Highlights here on Peacock. During the Olympics, we celebrate our athletes for their extraordinary achievements. But what you don't know is that behind every great Olympic athlete, there's often an equally great coach. And that relationship can be, it can be unique. It can be very unique. Snoop, I know you know that. I do know it, and I know it well. <laughs> Let's take a look at why. Sneak a peek. Mm -hmm. That's definitely his daughter right you, there. Yep. Do what she's supposed to. All right? That's his nephew. Mm -hmm. 
Is what I tell you to do. Cause you don't listen. Ah, they too old for that. Yeah, that's an older. They're too old for that. Yeah. I am so proud of you. One of U.S. track and field gold medal hopefuls is a high jumper, Vashti Cunningham. Joining us to talk about the unique relationship between coach and athlete is her coach, who also happens to be a father. Please welcome Randall Cunningham to the show. Welcome, Randall. Uh -oh. What's going on, man? What up, what up, what up, Randall? What's up, loved one? Hey, man, thanks for taking the time. And I know you're on your way to Tokyo. Are you excited to go there with your daughter? Yes, and uh, y'all are putting me back on the map, hanging out with you two. Yeah, yeah. Vashti is getting ready, brother. It's, she's excited. That's good. She should definitely be pumped up at the shirt option that you chose today. It says success, <laughs> Randall. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the shirt. Uh, here's a question, man. Is Vashti ready to bring home the gold? And if so, tell me just what makes her talent so special and unique. I would love to hear it from you. She's hardworking, dedicated, and, and she's like, she's she's serious, very, very serious about what she does. And she's been training well, so I'm, I'm really happy about where she's at right now. Strong. Well, you know, Randall, I had a chance to see her in high school when, when uh, my yep. son went to Bishop Gorman, so I know yep. how she's been on the grind for a long time. Can you walk us through what, what it takes to actually, you know, pull off such these difficult jumps that she does? Uh, she squats a lot, she leg presses a lot. She's just very dedicated. And then her proteins and things that she takes, she does things legally. She doesn't take PEDs or anything like that. So it's just natural God-given ability and she's very, very determined. The man said it's a natural God-given ability. That's what it is. He said, don't, don't make no, no mistakes. Don't put no none of that in there. That's, don't make That's the genetics. He, <laughs> he said, said don't his genetics <laughs> and his wife's genetics have spread down to his daughter. Right, but you see how he made yes. sure to make that very clear? Let me tell y'all something. This is called natural God-given ability. How about it? Huh? I like that. That's all right. you did there, Randy. You wanted to make you wanted to make sure people knew that that's your blood in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you did. That's all you basically said. Look, that's my blood. Okay? The bloodline check. <laughs> bloodline check. You know. We got a, we actually got a clip of her jumping. Let's take a look. Last March, she had won the U.S. title the previous week in a world junior record. Third and final attempt, and goes clear. Let's go, sis. Brilliant from Cunningham. Easy work of the field Easy this work. day. Six five was her best clear. Ah, right, get up, sis. You hear me? Get up, sis. Jeez. That's what I'm talking about. Look at my knees jumping over that thing like that, that there. Jeez. That means she can jump over you, kid. Nah, Six, well, well, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, she gonna have a problem jumping over me, but I'm saying you, she I don't she know what all the laughs came like, I ain't never heard the roar of laughter come so strong from this set since yes. I've been doing the show. Listen, Randall, man, you know, we, we can ask tons of questions, but the ones that I really want to know about are the heartfelt ones, man. I mean, for you as a father, seeing your daughter succeed right now, especially reach the levels that she's reaching, I want to know what that means to you. Is it tears of joy constantly, or is it is it one of those things where you're just pinching yourself in disbelief? Yeah, Kevin, it is. It's tears of joy. We're so serious during the track meet. Uh, and then when she, uh, like, for instance, when she walked up to me after she won at the Olympic trials, she said, here, Dad, gold medal. Uh, happy Father's Day. And I'm like, I mean, like, you know, the tears start to flow down my face because it's like it's a reality that it really happened. So I just I just begin to give God the glory because, you know, none of this is possible without God. I mean, I'm an OK coach. I, I think I know what I'm doing. I do a lot of research, but the emotion is just unfathomable. So, Randall, I got a real question. Like, I coach my son and I coach mm -hmm. my kid and that father <laughs> daughter relationship or father son relationship it could yes. it becomes a problem at a certain time when it's like they don't feel like they want to listen do you run into that problem or does she love receiving coaching from you uh you know it was one of the learning curves for me uh when she first began and she was younger 18 and she's in the olympics she's a, a world indoor champion she's like okay dad but then there gets to a point you know as you see right there i'm kind of being her servant but there gets to a point where she gets a little edgy and I got to back off, and I have to respect her knowledge in the game because she studies herself. So, yeah, we had a tiny issue back in the day. She's maturing, she's growing, and she's at that age now where she trusts me. And I'm at the place now where I trust that she knows what she wants because she'll come back and say, Dad, I need to scoot back three feet. And she'll, like, look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> that's, a, that's strong. I mean, I think that's the, that's the hardest part for that personal relationship, Snoop. Like the hardest part is to separate the role between father and coach. Mm. Am I right? It's tough. It's really tough because you love your kids so much that you want to see them succeed 
almost more than they do. Yes. Randall, do you think that there's an impact that's now being had uh, on the players or athletes that can't have their parents be in Tokyo? Is that playing a role in? Uh, yeah, you do? Kevin, it is. And it's, it's, it's very difficult. My, my wife does not like uh, that she cannot go to Tokyo and support her daughter. And it's affected not only our family, but other families. So, of course, I get to go because I'm a, a level one coach. Ooh, level, drop that on you. Level one. He dropped that on you. I'm a you level one You ever heard of level coach. one? Yeah, don't you, don't you mistake <laughs> it. Well, I'm a level one rapper then. Yeah. That's the case. Hello, say that. Let me bounce back on you. <laughs> Who else should we be watching on the U.S. track and field team? Because this is a moment to let the world know about other people that we should be paying attention to. Because a lot of us don't know until these events pop up about some of these athletes. Give us a couple of names we should be checking for. That's a good question, Snoop. Uh, Giovanni Oliver, sprinter. Will Clay is another one. Michael Cherry. Michael Norman, of course. And uh, there's just so many. USA has so many talented people. And it's so good. I love hanging out with them. I'm like a little kid in a candy shop when I get to hang out with the kids and go to the uh, uh, high performance center. It's like I'm over there. They don't realize I want to ask for autographs and things like that, but I kind of keep my cool. I love it, man. Randall, such a good moment, man, and such an honor to talk to you. As a Philadelphia native, you already know what you mean to me and, uh, and to our city. I wear that jersey proud. Uh, and I apologize, Randall, because I last time I had the jersey on, I was a, I was a drunken mess. I don't know if you know what it's <laughs> At the I Super Bowl? Was, yeah, I, I made, you yeah, know. I seen you acting a fool yeah, at the Super Bowl. I definitely acted a fool, Randall, and I want to say I shouldn't have had that jersey on when I did so. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, I, I spilled tequila on it, and I want to just let you know I got it clean, and it's, it's fine. The jersey's fine, but boy, did we have a day. Praise God. We're yeah, going to yeah, pray, pray for you, Pray for me, Snoop. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> Randall, man, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> much, much luck to your daughter and, uh, and where she is, man. Hoping that she brings home the gold, and we got another conversation to talk about soon. Yeah, I love you both. God bless you guys. Love Thanks you and so your family, much. brother. Go kiss your family, man. Peace. Yes, what a guy, huh? What a guy. Made sure to tell us about oh, his man. bloodline, didn't Come he? Come on, man. He laid that down, didn't he? He, laid, he made sure. Don't you don't you confuse this for nothing else but my that's genes. That's my baby that's, that's gonna be walking on that podium. You hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nothing but the Lord and my genes. That's it. Good for him, man. Good for him. <laughs> we'll be right back with more after this. Hi, lights. And we are back. Guys, we're still here at Olympic Highlights on Peacock. And I want to let you all know that Snoop is definitely drinking alcohol. Uh, yeah, I, I can smell it coming out of his cup. We're on two different pages. But we're, we're still here to provide an amazing time for you. The U.S. men's basketball team. Oh, my God. Oh, God, let's just take give a me, second. Let, let me have some of your drink. Uh, give, give, give me some of what's in no, your I cup. I need some of what's in your cup this before is, we get to this. This is beyond me. I can't get it. Oh, God. The U.S. men's basketball team suffered a shocking loss in their opening game to France. Take a look. This looked like cafeteria ball at its oh, finest. Look oh, at the way they geez. shooting. Look oh, at him. Oh, God. Dunk. Oh, we lost oh. to France. Snoop, no, what, I mean, what do you think the problem is with the U.S. men's basketball team. First of all, I'm looking at our lineup. We got 37 guards on the team, mm. <laughs> a half of a center, mm. and four forwards. Mm. Basketball is not solely dominated by the U.S. like it once was. The NBA is full of everyone from Every all country. over, man. So I think that the Olympics are now more competitive than they've ever been, and you're seeing a true sign of that. Yes, this isn't our best U.S. team that we could have assembled. But we that's get... why we're not winning. We should have went dream team on them. We can't keep playing with them because they're not playing with us. They, they team are like dream team. Well, one of the few highlights from this particular game was a robot shooting buckets at halftime. Wait a <laughs> <laughs> Wait a robot from 1986. Wait a minute. Is this real? Yes. Wait a they minute. Brought, wait, but wait a minute. They didn't brought an 86 robot out. Hold on, man. What? what? Hold on, man. Listen, I don't know how I feel about the robot shooting basketball. They try to tell us that they're going to have a robot league in a minute and they ain't going to need us to play no more. I'm telling you, that's what players are going to do. If somebody comes out of Tokyo with a crazy handle, amazing hops... And a and shot a, like this. And, and one, a it shot did. with the most perfect form that you've ever seen. Why is it so slow? <laughs> Why does it take you so long to take his wrist back after he shot? And it went straight in. He a robot, man! He's <laughs> cheating. Y'all get that robot up out of here. <laughs> All right, Katie Ledecky, Simone Biles, Kevin Durant. I mean, everyone knows the front runners, the stars, the chosen ones. Yet there's a group that I gravitate towards even more, the have-nots. 
talk about the long shots. The ones who look the universe in the face and say, I will prove you wrong. I'm talking about the underdogs. In some ways, I'm kind of an underdog too, Cam. Because oh. nobody, they, they didn't think I was going to be a corporate uh, spokesman. Mm -hmm. Nor did they think I'd be a top chef cooking along Martha Stewart. Hello. With a cookbook titled From Crook to Cook. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's the number one bestseller right now. Well, talk it then, Snoop. You better know it. <laughs> I also got nominated for an Oscar in Soul Plane. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. We yeah, didn't. Don't ruin my flow, kid. Well, yeah, but you, you just said But everybody that... loves an underdog story. I mean, let me just Speaking get the spotlight story, right now. Let's just cut to the chase here. Soul Plane would have been a hit. It would have been a hit if they didn't bootleg that movie, Snoop. Tell if you that. didn't bootleg that movie. You know, the, the word is out that I, that I released I know it you myself. released it. Because <laughs> they were saying I did. I said, well, Kevin the only one that had the main copy. I had bits and pieces. They you said, called for that, kid. I remember back in the day, they said that people saw the ending of the movie before you shot it. <laughs> people knew the ending of Soul Plane before we were done with the movie. I'll never forget that. I was at an airport. He was like, man, how you do that, Deshaun? How you gonna end up like that? That's what you talking about, man. We doing that right now. They had a cut that never was released. <laughs> so, Kev, who's the under deal double G of the day? Well, Snoop, you know what? I'm glad you asked. The four guys playing for Japan in 3x3 this year are Yuto Yaosaka, Kisi Tomainawa, and uh, Tomaya Okiai. And you guessed it, Snoop. Ira Brown, that's right. Ira Brown is on that team. I know what you're thinking. How the hell could an Ira Brown be in that bunch? I don't know, but there, there, there he is. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. How did he get on? Look at he out there popping his shit, too. Yeah, Ira. Man, how he get on their team, man? Oh, he finna go real black on him right now. Watch this. Go black. I'm going black on y'all. Bang. Look at it. Look, by the way. this shit. I'm going black to the hole. By the way, I'm... Mm. Well, Snoop, <laughs> he out there clowning. Yeah, Ira. Finna... I'm saying this right now. Ira's a robot. He is not... <laughs> he is not... From over there. You see how he was getting to the wreck? I, they I built him. I want to check Ira and see if he's got the same stuff in him that that robot had. <laughs> uh, on a serious note, though, let me tell you a little bit about Ira. Ira grew up in Texas in a poverty-stricken home where he lived with eight adults and 14 children. After his house was bombed by a rival family, well, he, lived, he went to live with his grandmother. And after she passed away, he bounced from couch to couch until he was adopted by his white high school basketball coach. Now, if you're thinking that you saw this movie and it stars Sandra Bullock, you're wrong. This is a new story that will be told soon called That Man Might Not Be From There. But, 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 but Ira, Ira, listen to this. He got drafted by the Kansas City Royals, the baseball team, and he played in their minor league system for five years, and when that didn't work out, well, he went back to basketball and he played for a small college by the name of Gonzaga. That's right. You've probably heard of him. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's him right there. But Ira did not make it into the NBA. He bounced around overseas for years at the college before finally becoming a superstar in Japan. I said it, he's a superstar in Japan. Ira was first adopted at the age 18 and then adopted the country of Japan at the age 32. And now he's getting adopted again by me because I'm cheering for this guy, not just because he's in the Olympics, but I'm cheering for him because he's an underdog and he continues to rise to the occasion. I tell you what, if this guy survived growing up in Texas with a name like Ira, then he can survive anything. Ira is built tough. That's a strong man right there. We'll be right back. Ira, good for you. Good Snoop, job, Ira. Man, what an underdog. From underdog to wonder dog. We're underdog you, to brother. wonder dog. Let's go. Between you and I, it's a fucking robot. I know he is. Welcome back to Olympic Highlights here on Peacock with myself and the legend himself, dog. Uh, Snoop, you know, I sometimes think to myself that there, there's certain Olympic sports that I say I could probably compete in because they don't look like they're that hard, right? One of those sports is actually table tennis. But then I watch the actual sport during the Olympics, and I say, man, these athletes that are participating in this sport are really good because the sport now looks so much harder than it did when I thought that I could do it. Here's an American, uh, Nikhil Kumar, winning his first of two matches before being eliminated. Take a look at this video, Snoop. Okay, damn, they table is close. Look Oof. how close it is. Oof. Damn, Look at they ain't got no space in the, in the Olympics. Pumped up. Pumped up he is, by the way. Hmm? Ah. He got swag with it, too. Go, oh, uh -huh. he's doing yeah. it. I never heard nobody grunt like that. Mm. I like mm. his swagger, too. I like the way he play. A lot of enthusiasm. 
a lot of these players have while playing table tennis, man. It gets a little, not just competitive, but Animated. Yeah, yeah. Animated. A lot of them. Ha, 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 ha. You ever see one of them rallies? They go on for a long time. I like that, though. That, that spirit, you playing with spirit. You know what I'm saying? I like, <laughs> I like people to play with enthusiasm. Man. Absolutely. I mean, Brings out the competitive yeah. nature in us all. Now, even though Kumar was eliminated, he still plays for the U.S. in the team event on August 1st. I want to say good luck to you, Kumar. In the meantime, to help us with our game, Snoop, I thought it would be nice to bring in an expert who actually played table tennis for the Korean national team and won eight international championships. She is now a coach and a global ambassador for the sport. Let's take a look at Sue Young Lee in action. Let's see her work. Oh, girl. Speed. Mm. Oh, wow. Bang, bang. Not enough. Bones. 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 Ooh, balls. wait a minute. Oh, not this trick. Oh, not, not no, the, she oh, didn't. Wow. No, she didn't. Oh, I have to meet this young lady. She, just she did is so special. Did you see her do the around the I cup? I seen her do cup? it. Was that you? I think so. How are you doing? <laughs> Welcome. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being had. What an amazing display of table tennis we just got to see with you, man. man first of all, I got to ask you, what's the difference between table tennis and ping pong? Table tennis is an official name, so we. We use this name in, in Olympics and the World Championship and competition tournaments. But ping pong is the first name, and you can, you know, use that name for the creation or social game. So, is it one of those things where you can tell how good the person is by the way that they talk about the sport? Like, if I say, "Yeah, man, I play ping pong all the time," you can tell I'm not good yeah. because if I was good, I would say table tennis. Is it one of those things? Yeah, I think when I play. It's table tennis. When you guys play, it's ping pong, I think. <laughs> when you say you guys, she's talking about black people. She's no, talking about she, black people. She just said, she, she, she's, she's talking about black people. No, no, she's telling you, no, the, she's no. telling you the proper way of, of, of addressing the sport. Because in the, in the hood, she's right. We don't call it table tennis. We call it ping pong. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying the way she said it. She I said she it the appropriate way. She okay. told the truth. She oh, tell it like it is well, and not like it was. Well, I'm here to, you know, help you guys play table tennis today. Okay, so she gonna teach us how to step our ping pong into table tennis, so that way when people see us now, Ken, we can say, uh, by the way, would you like to play some table tennis? All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take That's... it as that. You know, my dad been playing ping pong since 1976. My dad was locked up back then. <laughs> that's, when he, uh, that's when he got the game, and he made it a sport. That's when it became Did he get big. that penitentiary championship? I believe my dad got two pin medals. If you Ooh, go look at my big. dad's portfolio, oh. yeah, wow. very, very true. It's hard to beat people in the penitentiary, Sue. So I don't know if you can survive that. <laughs> Your championship skills may not travel <laughs> yeah. well. <laughs> Who is the Someone's Michael Olympics? Jordan of table tennis. Who is the greatest his table name? tennis player of all time? That's a good question. My favorite player, I think he's from Sweden, actually. So his, his name? name is Bartner. Yeah. yeah that, he Amazing don't that player. He was the six times world champion. So I want to bring some attention to a guy named Mookie Johnson. Mookie, now, he don't have the <laughs> same number of championships, but I saw Mookie run all 32 games at a pool hall one time. They had one ping pong table in the back. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that he deserves a goal, but Mookie a bad man. He 32 games. 32 in a row? I mean, if I had a camera back there, people could put him in that conversation. He just ain't had the opportunity to, to play at that stage, level, because yeah. Mookie ain't Pass the piss test in years, you know, <laughs> due to due to what he does with his extracurricular activities. Right. But but you get what I'm saying, though. I'm just saying I know people in the hood that play table tennis or down. ping pong that really get down. I would like to see what your skills look like against somebody like me. Oh Ooh. sure, I can show you. Let's check it out. <laughs> well, I don't think it should just be you. I don't think that you well, we and can, I. We can we can double we, up yeah, together. Maybe we play her together. How about we do this? That ain't gonna be no fair. We're gonna beat it if we play together. Well, yeah, that's why I said do it, so we can at least have a good conversation that's stronger. On yeah, our while we whooping on it, we can just be. How about, about that? I can give you guys some tips, and that you guys have a one match. No, we want to play. Uh, yeah. We play <laughs> yeah, maybe we, maybe want, we, we give you tips. At that eight, we want to action <laughs> well, at them eight that championships. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we need to give you tips after this game. Okay. Yeah. I'm from the school of Mookie Johnson. Uh, <laughs> come on, let's go over here and play. Snoop. Uh, Away Snoop, we go. Do your part. Table tennis. I'm All gonna right. do mine. You we'll just, just handle the left part. side. I'm handle the right side. <clears throat> what side am I on? You got that side over there. Just keep her inside. Don't let her get outside. Oh man. I seen that footage. Look like she got a hell of a a spike ball. All right. Okay. With speed. Uh, I mean, look, let's keep it simple. I, I, I know you know the rules, so I don't have to explain Sure, sure. Do. Let's warm it up. This your half, this my half. Okay, you need to warm up? Should we let her warm up? Nah, yeah, hell sure. no. No, I don't no, need, no, I don't need, we no don't need warm up. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. No no stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Ready? Wait, uh, this me and first. Wait, hold on, no, in you America, serving? It's me and first. Which one? 
We do we, men we first. We start first. Okay. Men first. Yeah. So oh, it's a lady up. first. No, 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 we don't do that. Okay. Men first. No, we don't do that here. Okay. Not, not on Olympic highlights. Okay. Olympic highlights is all men. Okay? okay. And all of us first. You ready? I'm ready. Pay attention. Yeah. I'm so it's coming ready. in fast. Here so we go. Ready. <laughs> she ain't ready. Here we go. Ah! Yeah, Snoop. Whoa. Ah. That's corn. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> She wasn't supposed to get that. Well, I didn't get the first one. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Now, I thought we had a hell of a rally going yeah, on. I'm not here to, to put out rumors, but I definitely know a ball is coming in a little too fast. Right on oh, shit. Oh, cuz. Oh, he down, cuz. Cut the cameras off. They're not going to see my uncle like this. Cut the cameras off. I ain't going to let the world see my uncle down like this. I got you, cuz. Oh, Cold Tid. Oh, Cold oh, Tid. Oh, Snoop Dogg took, a, he took a ping pong ball. Oh, hey, we need to get out of here. There's Sue, don't you touch him, Sue. Don't touch him after you did what you There's did. I want to thank uh, Randall yeah. Cunningham for coming I just out. Wanna give it Sue Young Lee, aka the Terminator. Thank her for coming out. Uh, to all the oh, athletes, thank you guys for just being a part of this thing that we're doing and inspiring us and giving us good material for the show. I got a 10 to my uncle. He took one to the rib. Uh, we'll see you next time he's back, on Olympic he's back. Highlights. Okay, he's back. He's that back. was a low ball, ball, man. Oh. He's back. No, Sue, you did enough. Get out of here, you killer, <laughs> murderer. Uh